everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We're really excited today to talk with another one of our hall stars. This is so fun. We have Dan Janot here and thank you so much, Dan, for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I love how festive you look. Oh, thanks. You gotta be, <laughs> gotta be in, in the season already in, uh, in November. I mean, we've, we, it feels like I've been, uh, it feels like the season has been going on for many months, but <laughs> <laughs> And it's not even Thanksgiving, it but uh, the season should never stop. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. And what we like to do for, for new guests is to find out a little bit about you and, and uh, what inspired you to get into acting. How did you get started? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, since I was really young, I've always loved stories. I read a ton of books when I was a kid. For a long time, I thought I wanted to be an author. And then as I got older, my kind of love for storytelling, I guess, shifted to film, film and TV. And then I thought I wanted to be a director, but it was only in college when I uh, did a play kind of on a lark that I thought to myself, well, you know, this is actually pretty great. Uh, live performance is pretty fun. And then uh, not long after that, I made a friend who was starting an improv troupe at our college. And he also uh, encouraged me to do the, the theater program at our school, which I didn't even realize existed. But through those two things, through improv and this theater department in my college, my world just kind of got blown open to the, the possibilities of, uh, you know, just how exciting it is to collaborate with a group of people, to bring a story to, to life. And, and then, well, in the case of live performance, to get to actually do it in front of people. It was just a... The whole thing, the whole package just felt so good to me, so just right. And I felt like I was using my mind, I was using my body, I was uh, doing something that seemed to have a purpose in a way. I could imagine that there was a, a, a larger purpose to it. I'm bringing entertainment to people, laughter, thought-provoking stories, and I seem to be all right at it. So um, yeah, that just kind of led me to, uh, to yeah, to, to doing theater and improv in Montreal, where I'm from. Eventually that kind of translated into a, a on-screen career. Yeah, how'd you make that transition from doing the improv to getting that? Like, I feel like that's almost, seems like that would be almost the hardest step to go from, to getting that first role and then going from there. Yeah. It is often for, for a lot of actors, um, the hardest thing because, well, you know, for a few reasons, but one of the reasons being you need to uh, have experience in order to learn and grow and be a good actor, but how yeah. do you experience if you're not given the part to begin with? My My first role that I got on screen, which was also you you uh, you have to get um, roles to become part of your union. So I remember right. my first union credit. It was the way it came about was I was helping out at a casting agency, a casting agency that was auditioning people for a movie. I was the reader in the room. So I was reading opposite the people who were actually auditioning. And I had done this for a few days. It was like a, you know, this American movie that was coming through Montreal. It had a decent budget. There was a lot of days of work on this. And the director was there for a lot of the casting sessions. And eventually he said, like, I was in the room when he said it, he was, he said something like, let's, let's see if we can get Dan a job too. Let's see if we can give Dan a role. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I had a, a tiny role in the movie called death race, 2000 death race. Oh, okay. 2000. Yeah. Uh, it was a Jason Statham movie. Um, <laughs> and I'm like a guy sitting at a computer who says something along the lines of uh, three, two, one, we are now live worldwide because yeah. they're broadcasting the death race. Um, but it was also a pretty kind of ironic first line to have in a movie. We are now broadcasting worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah, was you must have been stoked to like. I yeah, I was super get... stoked, and uh, it was so exciting just to be on set. Uh, it was, you know, unlike anything that we 
the acting in theater and in film are obviously related, but the 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 production of a theater uh-huh. and the production of a TV show are just miles, worlds apart. And so it was very cool to be uh, to be a part of that and um, to make some money finally for uh-huh. once. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, just a bit part, but um, that's what you start with, and you sort of chip mm-hmm. away at it, you know. And eventually, hopefully, if you're lucky, it leads to bigger things. Yeah. So how did you end up getting the role of Brandon on Good Witch? How did that happen? I was um, living in Toronto at that point. They um, they were going to be uh, filming um, this new Hallmark series there. And uh, and it was it was just something I auditioned for. It was at, uh, you know, at a certain point in an actor's life. Again, if you're lucky, you're auditioning a lot, but you audition for so many different things because yeah. there's just a lot going on and they just throw it all, throw it all on the wall to see what sticks. And so I went in for this thing, not really knowing much about it. And I think I got a call back, although it was so long ago now, I'm not even entirely sure. What I do remember is Craig Price, who was the director for a lot of the episodes at the beginning of the, uh, of the show, he was there and he said at one point in the audition, Okay, let's do that scene again. And now um, just uh, just a bit more emotion. It's very vague as a director. Right, yeah. <laughs> but I did it again. I guess he liked what he saw. And then I came to realize once I was working on the show. Well, for one thing that, you know, you want directors want to work with people to who, with whom they don't need to say a lot. They, they want to be able to just give you a word and you can you can roll with it. And also with Hallmark um, shows and movies, there's a certain kind of sweet, earnest emotion that yeah. it's not in every single moment in every scene, but it's kind of that 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 Hallmark sparkle which mm-hmm. I think is what he was saying when he said, give it a bit more emotion. Uh, he meant just, uh, you know, make it sparkle a little bit more and yeah. to, uh, to a fantastic working experience for me. Yeah. Well, you need to have that heart for a Hallmark. There's no question. Mm-hmm. And, and it seems like that, that show would be a really great experience. I mean, just such a great cast. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful mm-hmm. people. I learned a lot from watching them. That was the first show that I did that I was a regular cast member of mm-hmm. and so I spent a lot of time on set whereas before it had been just uh, days here and there got to spend a lot of time on set watching from uh learning from these pros Catherine Bell Jamie Denton um Catherine Disher who played Martha mm. um just She's such, one of our faves <laughs> oh my God. It's such great actors and good people and a nice just a nice vibe on set I learned mm-hmm. a lot from that yeah, yeah I bet We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. From the hosts of the podcast Home for Hallmark, Molly and Brad now bring readers their debut novel, If Only Christmas Would Come, an instant Amazon bestseller, If Only Christmas Would Come, transfers readers back to Prince Edward Island during the era of Anne of Green Gables and features a strong-headed, cranberry-farming, jeans-wearing heroine and a playboy with a family secret. Reviewers agree this book is a fluffy, steamy, predictable Hallmark movie masterpiece, If Only Christmas Would Come, is available on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble now. Visit at Home for Hallmark for more info. That's at Home for Hallmark, and you can use our affiliate link in the description below. Well, I really enjoyed uh, Ghost of Christmas Past last year. I've been kind of championing it this whole year because I was very annoyed that they put it on like a Tuesday night when nobody was, you know, where it wasn't going to be seen by a lot of people because I thought it was the best thing that Lifetime released last year. And, uh, I, I, so I've had the, um, I've had the writer on, I've had Annie on, um, and, uh, we, we did it for one of our patron events. We watched it. And so I just, I just really thought it was a good script and uh, a clever idea for story. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I, I was excited to talk to you about that, but how did you get involved in that project? Yeah. How did that one come about? I, um, was wow. did they come to you they did come to me yeah i um got an offer back in let's see we filmed that in september of last year almost just over a year ago we filmed that mm-hmm. and yeah so i i, I got the I got an offer in august at some point and i remember i was up at a cottage and was really eager to find out who i was going to be working with and i had a really nice 
conversation with uh, Virginia Abramovich, who was the director of it. And we just talked about how, you know, how the banter was going to play out in the movie, because that was such a rich part of the script is just this back and forth between these two characters who are kind of, um, you know, butting heads a little bit at first, or they think they, they think they have each other's number at first, you know, but then obviously they slowly start to open up. But I thought it was, it was fun. And just, yeah, I was looking forward to doing it. And then I, I'd, I'd never worked with Annie before, but we met and I would say, I mean, I don't know, you've already interviewed her. I don't know what she said, but I felt like we hit it off right away. Yeah. <laughs> and she was, uh, she was great. We just really had like an, an, an actual good in-person rapport. And what's kind of crazy about these movies is that that's not a given, like you don't know for sure that the two leads are going to have good chemistry on screen or off because most of the time um, they're cast independently of one another. And so it's, you just cross your fingers that you're going to first of all, get along with the person. And then second of all, yeah. that um, play out on screen properly. Well, and so it was a tricky thing in that movie because because she is pretty critical of you uh and also i mean she's ghosting all these people so it, it, in the wrong hands her character could come off as unlikable mm -hmm. but i thought that uh they they because of the chemistry as you're saying and because of the banter and everything i think it you it became a well-rounded character yeah yeah and, and i mean in her hands annie is mm -hmm. one actor and uh can't help but you can't help but like her when you're watching her you know yeah and so yeah it was I thought that too it was a tricky tricky character because I think she's kind of you know with all that ghosting and with being critical of um my character uh I think she just is clearly someone who's got high standards you know yeah um and <laughs> yeah those people can come off as aloof or, or whatever but no she she was great and we had a really good time doing it other than the fact that we were shooting uh you know in um winter jackets and toques when it was like 22 degrees yeah. outside well uh, at least there's not that many outside scenes in that movie most sure. of it is in the office mm -hmm, most but of it. Uh, but yeah <laughs> but yeah. yeah the ending is so good i love that ending it's uh that you you um, uh, reveal that you're blinky all along and i also <laughs> love the scene where you throw your phone into the into the sink oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, Oh, no. <laughs> yeah yeah that was fun yeah I really liked the kind of the little physical bits in there and mm -hmm. uh, and the director was really open to us adding stuff improvising there's a few bits in the final product that were just just us ad-libbing yeah. and I think that that kind those kinds of moments always add a lot of life to a movie mm -hmm. well it was so clever because we as the audience know that that you're blinky and that she had ghosted you the whole time that you're helping her research all these, you know, and, and make amends with these ghostings that you're like the big one that she ghosted. It was like, Oh yeah. And yeah. That, so it builds the t romantic tension so well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was good. It felt earned when we, mm -hmm. when we get together. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think so. And, and it's just like a clever <laughs> idea for a movie, I think. Yeah, yeah, and kind of modern in a way. Mm -hmm. Not that ghosting is modern, but uh, the term is, and yeah, and more now that there's so much stuff that's being, uh, you know, so many relationships that are happening online or yeah. through apps. I guess maybe ghosting is more prevalent than it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it was. I thought it was a great idea and a fun concept to have a fortune teller at a Christmas party. Cause, <laughs> cause sometimes the like office movies, the, the like planning movies can be really dry. And right. so, but this was something that I've never seen before in a Christmas movie. Yeah, true. And now it just makes me think, I mean, not that I have an office to organize a party <laughs> for, but like, what a cool thing to bring yeah, to right. a party. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I just, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very underrated. So nice. yeah. Thank you. yeah. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. 
So not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Well, so they love in these movies giving you an accent and making you yeah. a European. What's, for some reason. what's up with that? Yeah. Well, uh, was that your question? What's up with that? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah i um i don't know if it has uh to do with i mean the fact is i did a tv show a couple of years ago rain where mm-hmm. we're all speaking with british accents even though there yeah. were bots and frenchmen and you know <laughs> everyone is yeah. speaking with a british accent you know uh that i, I is even, that hard like, well, like master the game rain, the accents? I had, yeah i had done plays with british accents and there is some, there's a bit more of a connection between Canadian culture and humor, a connection with that and British culture and humor than there mm-hmm. is with American. I mean, obviously it's all like, you know, we're the Europeans that came over to settle North America. A lot of them were Brits, but there's still, um, there's a bit more clarity in a comedic style, I think, between Canadians and Brits. And I know that I g- grew up watching a lot of um british stuff and monty python was was big for Mm. me and uh my wife is a huge jane austen fan we've watched uh she's watched all of the adaptations i've watched a number of them but i i think yeah i don't know i just started doing it in plays and then got to do rain and it comes naturally enough to me now to do the british accent the kind of RP, received pronunciation, general British accent. But then also I have been cast as a French guy. And I think they were just like, well, Jeanette sounds like a French name. Let's put it <laughs> in there. But like yeah. a, a Quebec French accent and a Parisian French accent are about as different as like a Southern Californian accent and an Irish accent. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're not at all the same. <laughs> um but yeah, if uh, you grew up in Montreal, did you did you did you speak French? I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I am okay. I'm half French. Yes. Okay. Um, but my French is very different than France French. Right. And, uh, yeah, I my my dad's uh, French Canadian. I mean, we speak we speak English at home mostly, but uh, I do speak French. It's nice to be able to work. Uh, well, I guess I haven't really worked in French French adjacent. Um, yeah. Fun, you know. Um, but then this, the movie that we just filmed that's coming out soon, The Royal Nanny, we filmed that in Belgium where they speak mm-hmm. French. So I got to, I got to speak to people in French there and that was really nice. That's but, cool. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess, I don't know, maybe I have a bit of, do I, do I seem European? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but so you, so The Royal Nanny, you worked, you've worked with Rachel Scarston before mm-hmm. on Rain, right? Yes. We were on Rain together. She came in, I think in the second season, I came in in the third season. It ran for four seasons. So we we worked together on this show, except we didn't actually work together because Rain had a couple of different um, storylines that were pretty separate from one another, different courts, uh, royal courts in different countries. Mm -hmm. And some of the characters never interacted with one another, including myself and Rachel. I played... James Stewart, who was the brother of Mary, Queen of Scots, helping her run things in Scotland. And Rachel played Queen Elizabeth I in England. And our storylines didn't overlap. So I was friends with her, but we had never actually shared a scene together. Oh, okay. Cool. Is that fun to be in like those costume dramas with all the with all the elaborate costumes and things yeah it's a dream i mean i think for a lot of actors whether or not they want to admit it we are basically just playing dress up we like doing this because it's like extended childhood playing pretend and when you get to put on costumes that are so different from normal life 
it's really, it transports you. Working on rain with these beautiful dresses the women were wearing and we're wearing like leather pants and like frilly shirts and big fur coats, swords and horses. It was so cool, so much fun to just step into that world and, and, and play in there for a little while. So anytime I have uh, the opportunity to do anything that's not just uh, normal life, not just uh, dressed like normal people, I find it very fun. Yeah, I think that would be, I think it would be fun. And plus it, it seems like it would really help you get into your character. Exactly. That's, that's yeah. just it. You, um, as soon as you dress, I mean, it's like putting on an accent as well, putting on an accent, dressing in clothes that are very different. You immediately don't feel like yourself anymore. And mm-hmm. that's a good kind of step towards building um, a character. You know? Yeah. So this, the world nanny, it seems like a trip. It seems really fun. Uh, yeah. so, <laughs> so why don't you tell our audience a little bit about it? Yeah, well, um, in the Royal Nanny, so I'd say, you know, the Royal Nanny is a bit of a departure or it's it's just, it stands out from a lot of the um, holiday rom-coms that we might be used to because there's this whole thriller aspect to it. It's about a um, secret service agent, uh, the English secret service. Uh-huh. They, um, they detect, they become aware of a threat against the Royal family but it's a mysterious threat. They don't know who uh, who's behind it. And so they decide that the best way to protect the royal family is to send one of their agents undercover. And uh, they choose Claire, uh, that's Rachel's character, to be the nanny to the children of the um, princess. Yeah. And she becomes sort of uh, un- unwillingly, she uh, she gets a crash course in how to be a nanny, but also be a secret agent. Uh, she goes undercover where she has to, you know, uh, has to take care of these kids and bond with them, also has to try to figure out where the threat is coming from, and also has to decide what to do about the kid's uncle, the very uh, handsome, charming, great British accent, uh, fourth in line for the yeah. throne, Prince Colin. Uh, she's got to figure out. Yeah. Her. So- well- They've it's- had so many of these royal movies. You got to switch it up somehow. And so this seems very fun. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a whole, there's a whole kind of action thriller aspect to it. And yeah. there's bad guys and there's uh, chases and, 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 and a mystery at the heart of it. Yeah. Like who is, who is behind all of this? And so when I read it, I was quite surprised. Uh, it, it wasn't like the other Hallmark things that I'd seen or, or read. And, uh, and it was delightful to, to get to be a part of something like that. Yeah. I mean, because Rachel, she's done action shows, I know, like Batgirl and things like that. So uh, I'm definitely looking for, I hope they take advantage of, of that. Yeah. That'd well, there's fun. definitely, you, you know, no spoilers, but there's, there's it's definitely some cool uh, Hallmark action sequences. All right. That yeah. sounds good. So you said it was filmed in Belgium, hmm. this, this castle. Do you remember the like name of the castle or where the castle, uh, where the castle uh, was? Yeah. So the castle itself uh, was in a place called Uidonk. So that's like, I believe it was written O-I-D-O-N-K. And that was uh, outside of Belgium. I mean, sorry, outside of Brussels. Most mm-hmm. of the movie was filmed in Brussels, but for a few days we went um, to Ouidon to film in this cool um, palace castle place. Yeah. Belgium was uh, beautiful. I'd never been there before. And I got to make a family trip out of it. I brought my wife and my son with me. And so it was really, uh, it was quite something. And we got to explore a bit of the country on our days off as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that So it looks like there's some like pranks and other things going on with the kids. And yeah. I'm just curious with things like when you get the spaghetti dumped on your head, that we see in the trailer, how many times did you have to do that? <laughs> uh yeah that's that's a good question what i what i remember when we when i first read the script it wasn't um it wasn't written out as a as a bucket of um wet noodles it was written as a bucket of glitter and i thought oh. how are we going to film this because you know any scene that is being filmed has to be done several times from different angles and you have to reset everything to make it 
like the beginning of the scene again. So I was like, I'm going to get glitter dumped on me, but then it's going to be everywhere. Yeah. Someone, someone caught that and <laughs> changed it so that instead it was these, uh, <laughs> these, you know, spaghetti noodles in a bucket. We still had to do it a lot. I would say I probably got um, like a bucket dropped on me. I don't know, 10 times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it actually was like harder than we expected it to be for the, for the noodles to fall in the right place. You know, we're doing this funny kind of, uh, I want to say trigonometry. We're trying to figure out the angle of the door. And there's like a crew member standing on a ladder behind the door for some shots. So he's just like dropping it onto me. But even still, it was like hitting me in the back. It was, you know, missing me. So we had to do it over and over again. And I, I would say, you know, I wish, I wish you could have done it a few more times because I, really, I wanted it to be dripping down my face. You yeah. Know? It was kind of like on my shoulder, but I'm still pretty. Funny. Well, yeah, I mean, you're just committed to the role. So <laughs> you gotta be right. <laughs> I'm not going to leave this set until I have spaghetti all over my face. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it, that, that looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> it was it was working with the kids that's always uh yeah uh, they always do such a great job in these homework movies with the kids yeah these kids were wonderful um isabel wilson phoenix la roche two great kids actual brits they were so sweet and so excited to be there and they did they did a great job and also i yeah. think just help they helped us adults remember um how lucky we were to be there you know yeah uh, it, it, it's easy it can be easy to forget because you're you're at work and work can be tiring or you might sure. feel you might be thinking about uh, what else is going on in your life or um you might just be physically exhausted but to have these two kids who seemed just uh just they had endless reserves of energy but they were also just happy to be there and they were yeah. sweet so that i'm so glad that we got to work with them well especially because these shoots are so short and intense mm -hmm. i can imagine it uh being overwhelming it's overwhelming yes. for for me as a professional actor and adult and uh i was impressed that these kids they worked almost as much as i did actually no they yeah they worked as much as i did and they they stuck with it you know mm -hmm. um, yeah they were, they were troopers it was great well and this is nice for a royal movie because it's it's not you don't have to have like a fake country like yeah that's you true. know just like a lot of them that, I've done those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> done those that, like genovia like they, they love the novias it's true they do i was a uh, i was a prince of um movdova once uh, yeah 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 <laughs> uh yeah no this time this time it got to be england although yeah. there there were kind of we have to be specifically vague about some things you yeah. know we couldn't say uh, we couldn't say like Buckingham Palace. Um, right. Our palace is called Kensington Palace in the movie. Mm. You can use, yeah, you can kind of make references, but some things can't be too um, on the nose, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. We like to end our interviews with some fun holiday questions. So yeah, let's do first it. one, what is your favorite holiday drink? My favorite holiday drink is um, uh, like a mulled wine. Mm, okay. Um, I have uh, have uh, some friends who have made beautiful mulled wine that's got, you know, like the cloves and cinnamon in it. And I think maybe they put in some rum as well. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah. It's sweet and warm. It's that warmth that really just makes you feel the holidays. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? My mother is a great baker 
and she makes um, a kind of dessert called milfei, uh, which is means like a thousand leaves, but basically it's a it's got like um like a graham cracker crust bottom. It's got a kind of like a custardy cream middle, and it's got mm. some chocolate kind of white chocolate on the top. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> so good, That's, it's delicious. I'm just, I'm just hoping she's gonna listen yeah. to this and make some and send it to me. <laughs> I'm like, you're selling it. Sounds good. <laughs> it's great. All right. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Um, my favorite Christmas song is, um, I mean, out of the standards, you know, like if this is a standard now for sure, it's Mariah Carey's All yeah. I Want for Christmas is You. Um, but when it comes like, so when it comes to Christmas Day itself, I really like to put on the kind of like jazzy versions, lounge singer versions of these songs, because yeah. I find too like I don't really want to listen to a whole playlist of just the the classics that you hear in the mall all the time mm -hmm. um so I like the kind of like smooth jazz versions of, yeah. of a lot of those ones yeah like Nat King Cole and stuff like that exactly yeah very good all right what's your favorite classic Christmas movie Home Alone <laughs> yeah 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 uh, I love Home Alone it, Home Alone was the first like comedy that I really remember laughing like, that I have like distinct memory of going to the theaters with my grandparents and just dying laughing. <laughs> it's classic. It's so it's and it's very sweet when you, when you watch, I mean, it's very violent, but it's also very sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't really make kids movies that violent anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, which do you like better Scrooge or the Grinch? Um, the Grinch. Okay. And which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Um, colored. Yeah. I mean, I can see why clear lights are like classier, but mm -hmm. uh, I like the colored ones. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Ooh, those are both pretty fun. I'll say <laughs> build a snowman. Okay. Good. All right. Do you consider yourself a good gift wrapper? Yes, I think I am a good gift wrapper. <laughs> Don't know what my wife thinks about that, but I, <laughs> I am a good gift wrapper. No, I'm well, not great can... at buying, finding gifts for people, but I'm pretty good at wrapping them. Well, you can ask her these questions after and find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? Um, No, I don't. Even if they're in Canada, you need one. Well, we just, wear, <laughs> we just wear sweaters year round, 24 yeah. seven, you know? Um, no, I don't actually. I know I've yeah. worn some before for movies or for um, parties, but. Mm -hmm. uh, no, yeah, I, I think guess. you wear one in ghosts. Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 Um, I guess I should invest in that. <laughs> You're like, all my sweaters are great looking. Not <laughs> ugly. I'm not going to wear anything ugly on purpose. <laughs> well, very good. You answered all the questions. <laughs> wonderful <laughs> thank you so much for coming on we really appreciate it and we're looking forward to the new movie and uh we just had a great time talking with you getting to meet you and yeah. do you have a uh, social media or anything like that you want to share yeah people can follow me on instagram at little spoon man okay great we'll have that in the description and hope y'all hope you have a very merry christmas yeah and, thank uh, you so much yeah all right <laughs> okay We'd like to thank Dan for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with him and let us know what you think of all the things we talked about in the comments or on Twitter. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And make sure you're following the podcast at Homeworkies Pod and Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us your ratings and reviews. That really, really helps us a lot. Helps people to find the podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We are almost at 5K subscribers on YouTube and uh, we're doing some shorts and stuff like that. So you really want to be, if you're only listening on the podcast, you're missing out on some fun shorts and some fun other content. So check that out and uh, check out our patron group. We talked about the patron watch alongs that we do and other events uh, and you don't want to miss on that. It's the best way that you can support us in the podcast and get tons of fun perks. And also we have the merch store where you can get all kinds of festive designs. So please take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much again to Dan and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>